Hey, hello guys. Yes, once again, welcome to my channel. My name is Niai, aka Ganyo B. Yes, I'm the guy that tells stories about Ghana and Africa. And today, I'm bringing you a story from Ghana, and it's a very sensitive issue, which I would like to discuss with you. I'm talking about the CSE, that is Comprehensive Sexual Education. And I'll be going there to talk with them, but I want you to come along with me and let's see what they have to say. My name is Niai once again, and if this is your first time, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and then comment. Stay tuned, let's go talk to them. Welcome to my channel. My name is Niai. Can yeah. you introduce yourself to my people? Uh, I'm yeah. Frank Mutfafa, a teacher of social studies. Of social studies. Yeah. All right. What, what is your name? Okay, so my name is Grace Okon Brakatu. I'm Sekote. Okay. What at all is the CS? Because a lot of people out there don't really know what the CS is. The, that is the Comprehensive Sexuality Education. Okay. Which is far different from the previous one on adolescent reproductive health. Okay. The first one was on how the adolescents will take good care of his or her body, the changes that occur in the adolescents. And as the adolescent keep growing, some of the challenges that the adolescent will face and how to keep those challenges or work on those challenges. But the current one which has been introduced, the comprehensive sexuality education, to me, and looking at the content and what we have in the syllabus now, I don't think it's helpful. The reason is that if you tell a child, irrespective of the age, that you have the right to sex and that parents have no right to interfere with the sexual life of a young boy or a young girl, then there's a problem. So the C, um, SE is the Comprehensive Sexual Education. And then uh, if you ask me as a teacher what it, it is, the content, I wouldn't be so much ready to tell you everything because you know there was a new curriculum which was introduced and then we did a training and everything, but nothing was mentioned on anything concerning uh, comprehensive sexual education. So we don't really, we have not officially been given the content. So I can't just stand here and then speculate or presume the content is this and that. But I have done my own research on it and then a couple of countries that actually rejected it. And I'll, I'll use my example specifically, I'll give my example towards the U.S., for instance, where the um, kids as young as five years and all that were being taught how to make proposals, sexual proposals, um, how to play around sexually with their bodies, how it was okay to feel you are uh, a male when actually you were female and vice versa. And then they were actually teaching kids like how to have sex and then reach orgasm. And it was okay. That is the content I have, the unofficial content I have, is what I'm talking about. What is the CAC? What is it about? Okay, it's talking about comprehensive sexual education. Okay. Yeah, and basically, uh, we are following trends from other countries, but the content is nowhere spread out. And I think that is the genesis of all the misunderstanding in the country. Okay, so what, what are some of the contents within that you can point out? For example, there's one that says that the child has right to sex. Okay. And that parents have no right to interfere with the sexual life of a young girl or young boy. And it was specific on the age. It says, irrespective. So if the person is one year, Still. You, you, you have no right to interfere with the person's sexual life. Again, there's another portion that says that you must teach the child to get there. Please, we are adults. To get there. To get where? Orgasm. 
Now, if you are teaching a young boy or young girl to get to her orgasm, please, I don't think at that stage the child should know all these things. Okay. Again, there's one that says that the child has a right to have sex with a partner, partners, or alone. So the alone aspect means that that child can masturbate or, I'm sorry to say, use the finger to work on her clitoris in order to feel sexually aroused. Do you think there's a difference between that? Well, as I said earlier on, I've not been given any official content. But looking at the rumors or the unofficial From information, research, yes, I think there's a vast difference between what we used to know and what is being introduced. The previous one was a bit polished, concealed, very decent. But this one that is going to be introduced is very open. Like there are no limitations, there are no restrictions, no control whatsoever. It is just open. The distinction between the two is about the content and what the people are supposed to know and that they, then at the age level. I think now the, with the new curriculum, they are trying to bring it down to, I think, lower primary. And at first, we used to start it from maybe class six upwards. I think that is basically the problem now. But the content is not that, there isn't much distinction between the content. Okay, but someone might say, mm -hmm. nowadays the children out there already knows all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. So do you think it is advisable for, for, for them to be taught in schools earlier than? Okay, you see, we need to know certain things. If a child is taught on sex, it depends on what the child must know with regards to sex. If you teach a child that sex, no matter what, you have sex, but at this stage, you have sex, you should have sex, the child will have that in the mind and wait to that stage. But here's the case, you are telling the child, irrespective of the age, and that that child has sexual rights. So if at the age of one, two, three, and the child is having sex in the house, sorry, and the parent comes in, the parent cannot interfere. So to me, if this thing start, even to start this at the JHS level is bad. Because we have children between the age of 11, 12 in JHS 1. They are not grown for such things. Let's face reality. Even when you take this to the SHS, it will corrupt our students. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the moral fiber for the future will be destroyed. And they know all these things. They are already practicing it. So what is the difference if it's being taught openly to them? Okay, um, there is a difference because if you want to take up such an action, you must consider a lot of things. Number one, what exactly, look at the, the, the community, the nation in which you are in. What is the culture? What are the children like? They might know, fine. Some people might know, they wouldn't uh, practice it. But what now you are telling them it's their right. So in other words, you are telling them to rebel. You can't actually have any control over it. And if you want to teach such a topic, me, I would have loved the kids to be taught about sexual education. Like even the Bible says it. The, the Quran, I, I believe, would also say that uh, train up the child in a way to go. And even God gave us as human beings our own will. To be able to decide whether we want to do good or bad. People, people are saying that with the new uh, introduction of the CSC, children have the right to sex. Uh, sex, as they have the right to sex, and parents cannot interfere. That is what people are saying. I think that one is misconstrued, and people don't have the right understanding of it. I think even if this curriculum was even prepared by Satan. He will not feel this into it that we should teach the children how to have sex. And sexual, we are born with that sexual instinct. Nobody is taught how to have sex. If it is, it is time for you to have sex, we know with our Ghanaian culture, nobody will stop you. But uh, you, can you tell me that this new curriculum is saying that the children should have sex? So when they have sex and they get pregnant, who will now take care of them and their unborn child? So I don't side with, the, with, with, with those propagating those agendas. And I'm not even sure that 
the government is also propagating that agenda. And nobody can convince me that the government is saying that we should teach the children to have sex. That is why I'm saying that basically the main problem is about the content. I think Ghanaians don't know about the content of, of that thing. And they are also saying whatever they like. Whatever they are saying. I don't know where they got that content from. But nobody is saying you should teach the child to have sex, right to have sex. You know, every action you take, I've got its consequence. Okay. If you say the child should have sex, and GES are saying that, can they also say that they will take care of, when the child gets pregnant, they also take care of those children. So I don't side with them. And I'm not even sure it is in the content. Okay, so if I may ask, looking at, in Africa, we have our own moral way of living and in our culture. Yeah. Do you think this thing can have its way to be implemented? Let me be, let me be, let me be frank. Let me be frank with you. You see, this thing, I said it earlier on that these things are not good for us. You see, culture is a way of life of a society. And that culture, as we all know, is bound to change. But the question is that when there is a change that is coming in to have an effect on what we practice already, you understand, what we practice already, if that change will address our need, we should accept it. If that change will create a problem, we should not accept those change. And if the change is in line with our way of doing things, then it is proper we accept the change. But from what we are seeing and what is being introduced, it has nothing to do with our culture. It is not in line with our culture. It is not coming to address any problem. It is only coming to create confusion and problem. So there's no need to accept this change. In Africa as a whole, we have our culture and moral aspect when it comes to things like this. Do you think it has it will have a problem with this new introduction system? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It, you see, those complaints sexual education, it, it, it has bearing on our culture. On our culture. I'm not I don't think even in Europe, where their culture is very secular, they will even tell you that teach the children how to have sex. And I've left alone Africa, that we are so much concerned about our culture. And then we we'll have a syllabus or a curriculum. That is propagating sexual education to the extent that let the children have sex. It is their right to have sex. I, know, I think it is misconstrued. Okay, but do you think Ghanaians are being hypocritical? Ghanaians are not hypocrites. I said it earlier on during our interview. I said Ghanaians are descending. You see, when you say Ghanaians are hypocritical, I mean on the issue, instead of waiting to go through and wait till it's been passed or before they start talking. No. You don't know full details. We, my brother, we, there's, there's not a patient here. We don't need to be patient. Let me tell you, if this thing is passed, there'll be trouble in Ghana. Not in the form of conflict, but the moral fiber of this nation is going to deteriorate. Now, I made a point earlier on where I said students in JHS1 are between the age of 11, 12, 13. You are teaching them Adolescent reproductive health, where you teach them about sex. Now, there's a topic called chastity, where the child must abstain totally from anything related to sex. Now, these kids know sex already. Know that they've had sex, but they know. Are you telling me we should bring this for them to do it? Parents must teach their children that this is sex, but you must get to this stage before you start. So if you bring this, and I said it earlier on that, irrespective of the age. So if there's no, uh, um, uh, um, how do you call it, bar or restriction on the age, and the child starts from, let's say, class one, please, by the time he or she gets to class four, five, can you control that child? You can't. So, and again, I said that we want to control population growth as a country because the effect of population growth is having a serious toll on us. And that is why there has been implementation of uh, these family planning methods and other stuff to curb the growth of population in Ghana because of the numerous yeah. negative effects. If you allow children to start these things, what would you happen? There will be an increase in teenage pregnancy. Yes. How do you fight teenage pregnancy and allow young girls to have sex? You said you are fighting teenage pregnancy. Then you allow young girls to have sex. Then the work you are doing is zero, cost zero or cost nine. You are not doing anything. So are you trying to say Ghanaians are being hypocrites 
on this issue? Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. We are being hypocrites. We don't want to accept the fact that the children knows a lot about their sexuality. As teachers, I think we are only encouraged to coach them. Coach them on the right thing. You don't do this. You don't do this. If it is sex you want to have, wait till you are, you are done with your tertiary education. Wait till you have a good job and you can take care of yourself. Then every consequence that comes out with having the sex, you can deal with it. I think that is what should be, uh, should be in it. But not by saying that we shouldn't do this. And I think, as you said, I think it is also true that we, we, we don't understand the content. We don't understand the content. That is what I think. Okay, so, so if, I, if I may ask you, do you think Ghana needs the CSE? No. No and yes. Why no and yes? Because we need, looking at the rate at which our kids are going, we need to educate them. Number one, we need trained personnel who will be able to teach and teach very well. Like what they need to know, what not. You know some parents, some adults are even irresponsible. We've not trained any teacher to handle that. And even the content in which we want to teach the kids has a question mark. So if some of the content uh, uh, of the syllabus that uh, CES is taken out and then rebranded, I think, of course, they need sexual, comprehensive sexual education. But if it's the current content they are going to teach them, we don't need that. Yeah. Okay, so to, for, to your point, yeah. this thing need not to be passed. Not at all. No, please, my reason is very simple. You see, I said that culture is the way of life of a society. And our way of life mm -hmm. is different from the way of life of people from Britain, Canada, America, etc. Because we have our own culture. Any change that we bring in must be in line with our culture. If the change is not in line with our culture, it will create confusion and problem. What, what is your stand, if I may ask you? Do you think it should be passed by law? I so think it should be passed by law. But just that, to be a content that will be regulated. Maybe at class 4, this is what you are supposed to know. At class 5, this is what you are supposed to know. And I think it is in it. Because you cannot tell me at class 4, your children know those things. We, we, you see, we don't... We, mis we misunderstand their, their level of intelligence. These children are very intelligent. And they know those things. A child came to me saying that, hey, Daddy, a teacher, he said, yes, oh, my father and my mother have sex. You think if this child can uh, uh, ask the father this question, the father will give the child a better explanation of what he saw. You see, but Africans, we behave like us with, and we think they don't know. We think they know. They know these things. We are only encouraged to coach them. Coach them, tell them that in class four, you can't do that. Your, even, even your system cannot accommodate those things. When you start having sex, at such a tender age, it, it hurts your development. You cannot grow. I thought, even that's the scientific as aspect, even without our moral aspect. At certain age, when they start having sex, they can't grow again. That is from my scientific background. And even our cultural aspect, we know how we found on sexuality in Ghana. So I think, even though, as much as I support that, it should be passed. The problem should be on the content-wise. What did you advise to African parents out there in terms of their child in relation to sex? Okay. Uh, parents must be honest to their kids. Parents must be honest. You see, when you lie to the child, for example, if you tell your child that if a guy or a boy touch you or touches your shoulder or any part of your body, you get pregnant. And somebody touch this girl and there's no pregnancy. The child will call you a liar. You are lying to your own daughter. You example, of a example, you know, I deal with students. And I was teaching a topic on chastity. And a, a student told me that mo my mom said, if a guy touch me, I'll get pregnant. And I asked her, so has any guy touched you before? She said, yes. And I asked her, are you pregnant? She said, no. So what do you say to your mom? She said, my mom is a liar. You see, so we should be honest to our kids. Tell them the truth. Sex is there for everybody, unless you are called by God at a very tender age. So far as you are growing, you definitely marry and have sex. So let that child know that a time will come, she will have sex. But teach her the ways, how to prevent those things until she gets to that stage. Don't lie to your word and say if you are tired. 
Again, if you continue telling your child those things, and I don't play with boys, play with only girls, your child will end up becoming a lesbian. What is the best advice you can give to any African parents watching in terms of sexual education to your, for their children? Okay, looking at how the world is going right now, uh, kids spend most of their time at school and then some time at home. But whenever, whatever time they spend at school is with their books. When they go home, it is something else. So parents as stakeholders should work hand in hand with us, the teachers, so that we will solve this whole issue. Don't sit down as a parent and say, oh, I don't care after all. I'll pay my fees. I'll send my child to school. No, you are a stakeholder. If uh, any policy which is uh, unfavorable is passed and your kid is taught, it will come down to harm you during uh, uh, um, memory lane or whatever it is. I'm sure some teachers are parents also. So we are all stakeholders. Let us try and inquire more about this whole issue and then deal with it as best as we can. Let's try and be neutral. Let's try and not jump into conclusions. Let's try and not aggravate anything. Let's, let's demand. It is our right to know, right to information. They should, let's insist. And if uh, anything is imposed on us, I think if they, they decide to teach our children contents we don't want, and we all decide we are not taking our kids to school, they, they can't impose. Yes, okay. if every parent withdraws their children from school because you are teaching us content we don't know, do you think they will carry out this, this curriculum? No, they will withdraw. So as stakeholders, let us all work, let us push, and then the, it, it will be in our best interest for our kids and then the nation as a whole. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm so happy to have you on our channel. You're welcome. Okay. So, what is your advice to African parents watching this video? Uh, what will you tell them in relation to sex education? I think they shouldn't leave their work for only the teaching. And they shouldn't also feel shy of talking about sex with their children. This is the new age. If you decide not to teach the child, they will find it from other sources. And those sources might not help the child. We shouldn't be shy. Talk to your child. Uh, talk to your child. This is penis. This is what it's, it, it is used to do. When you, go, when you misuse it, this is what it can lead you into. This is vagina. This is how you take care of it. We shouldn't behave like ostrich. Those children are exposed to a lot of things. Let's just help them and coach them so that they grow up to become better citizens. In this country. Thank you so much, Mr. Nipri. You're welcome. God bless you. <laughs>